Hey beeps, 2019's here, time to tame a mukbang's back. Let's do this. So, <laughs> today we are eating some pastries from 85 Degrees C. If you haven't heard of them, they're practically becoming as ubiquitous in Seattle as Starbucks. They are a, I believe, Taiwanese, oh my goodness, do not quote me on that. They are a Chinese pastry chain known for a lot of stuff. I've got a small smattering of their goodies here. Mainly the stuff I felt like eating today. It's actually a cake on the shelf. And we'll go through eating some of these. I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish all of these. My lunch was actually rather huge. I'm not trying to be clickbait. I bought what I thought was reasonable and then I just haven't gotten hungry and I'm running out of daylight. I wanna start by saying this is an interesting one in that this is one of the few chains I will ever cover for a mukbang. Mainly because there aren't really a lot of chains in Seattle. Like. I think I know where one subway is. I don't know where Wendy's is. We just don't have them. Seattle has a lot of chain lets where we have a lot of just local places have like three or four restaurants like Tacos Chucky's I think has four stores now. But we don't really have a lot of conventional chains and yet we've been getting a lot of like the Chinese and Japanese chains recently which makes sense because there's a lot of people from China and Japan moving here. So let's eat some. Talk about it with this awkward January night light we got going on. So we have a sponge cake. It'll focus, come on. So we got a sponge cake. We have their version of a melon pan or melon bread. It's got a really crispy, crackly, egg washed exterior top, nice and golden brown. I do like how this one has a really deep crust, unlike some of the melon pan you'll see on in regular bakeries. We have a cream cheese tart, which this is honestly my favorite and we'll probably eat it first because I adore these. It's got like a cream cheese mousse, very similar to a fluffy cheesecake. And then it's got a nice buttery crust. Then we have a cream cheese brioche, continuing my obsession with cream cheese and a strawberry deluxe cake, whatever that means. Because honestly, I have no clue what these names mean in some cases. Like this was called some kind of like a brioche when it's clearly a melon pond based on the exterior. I got nothing. But we'll eat some stuff and talk about it, see what we think. First, I gotta get one of these guys because I just love me a good cream cheese tart. Let's see if we can get it out. This is just making the whole room smell like butter and cheese and I am here for that. I do like that it's a pretty light bake underneath. Normally I'm not a huge fan of this style of bake. This is what I nicknamed the American bake, like what you see at Costco, like that really golden brown, like their croissants. This is not gonna have as much flavor, but I feel like there's a good thing against the cream cheese letting both shine. If you want to see like a really deep French bake, it's going to have those strong caramel notes in the crust and that might overwhelm this delicate little filling. Enough talking, <laughs> I should try some. Cheers. The cream cheese is super delicate and fluffy, and there's a nice vanilla butteriness to the crust, which is super thin up top. I appreciate the execution there. It's just nice and even, as opposed to letting either one take center stage. Need to have some more. The texture is eerily similar to the cream cheese you'll get on top of muffins. It's that fluffy, spongy cream cheese filling. I feel like I should mention something here because I don't know where else to put it, but 
there's actually a reason that I don't really make faces when I eat. And it's because I started out before YouTube doing a lot of professional judging. And I didn't do a lot like on the judging circuit, but a lot of evaluation of food. And it's really, really nice to let everything else relax and focus on the food. Hi, airplane. If you want to try it, try taking a bite of food as normal. And then try what I do, which is you let your eyes go slack. I found that it's easier to let your eyes relax like you're doing a magic eye rather than actually focusing on something and just letting everything go just loose and focus all your energy on tasting. You will taste a lot more. You also look really weird when you do it. Priorities. Yeah, I love the crispness at the very end. It's very buttery, little crispy ends of the tart shell. I am gonna work on having facial expressions in videos when I'm eating. It's just really hard to do when you've had years and years of being like that when you're eating. Whoops. Today's pairing is water because I need it. It is the best way to stay hydrated when eating sugar stuff, period. Milk is great if you enjoy it. I do enjoy tea as a pairing, but when I just want to get the water out of my system, <laughs> when I want to get the sugar out of my system as fast as possible, and basically balance things out, it's all about water. Mm. Let's, let's try this cake. I don't know if it got here okay. Find out. So we have this almost unreal pink strawberry cake with a powdered sugar dusted strawberry on top. This guy to the side. And some kind of maybe a melon or a jelly in the center. Oh, whoa, it is cold. It's like a jelly. I know I shouldn't just poke my food, but I was curious. It looks like we got a couple different things in here. Maybe a strawberry jelly, a vanilla jelly, and whipped cream. Let's try it. It's very sweet, like eating strawberry jam. Oh, right, let's try the center. Vanilla custard. Very, very sweet though. Super sweet, oh my goodness, whoa. Not gonna lie, I am not sure if I can continue that guy because it is really, really sweet and I can't handle that much sugar anymore. It's one of the downsides of eating a lot of dark chocolate is just that the longer I've been doing this, the less I've been able to eat super sweet stuff. All right, let's try this sponge cake, chocolate sponge. Were you also really into Little Debbie snacks, like those little roll-ups as a kid? Because I was definitely into those, oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Cheers.
I'm not a fan. I'm, it's really dry. I'm having a really hard time chewing it to actually talk about it. The layering, the amount of filling to sponge ratio is actually pretty nice. Like, I can see where they were going there. And there's a very nice light sweetness from the vanilla and the chocolate sponge. It isn't super sweet, but dang, it is dry and it is drying and whoa. I admit these will be mukbang where I don't finish a lot of stuff because a lot of this I haven't had before. So there's gonna be first impressions. There's gonna be stuff I don't personally like and that's just gonna be how we roll here. So I am so glad I brought water. It's really drying. Oh wow. I kinda just wanna use this as percussion you know, I played the cello in high school. I don't get where this desire to play the drums is coming from, but here we are. So, Melon Pond. If you haven't had Melon Pond before, the nickname of Melon Bread. Yeah, so now you know a Japanese word. Pan in J Japanese is bread. Yay, learning! Not what you expected on a mukbang, I'm betting. Okay, moving right along. A Melon Pond usually is a cookie crust with an egg wash and then an enriched dough base. So this is behaving almost, well it did say brioche, so it might be actually a, let's see. This smells like a croissant. This might be the Danish instead. So it might be a, you know, a layered dough with a melon pond crust. Super curious about. One way to find out. is not a melon pond. I am down for being wrong. And yes, my memory of my purchases is more, oh look, melon pond. So this is a laminated dough. As you can see all the layers here. And still got a melon pond crust, which I'm still gonna try separately. It's a nice crisp cookie. There's not much flavor to it, but melon pond flavor on top usually is pretty much a little bit of egg and a little bit of like butter or margarine type of note. It's meant to be more of a texture thing. And this is a crumbly, crispy cookie. And this, honest to goodness, looks to me like I'm looking at the inside of a Costco croissant. That's not an insult. We can get into croissants and my opinions on croissants another day. If you really want me, want me to, I can do that. I have thoughts on croissants but it's a very soft layering. I'm not seeing like huge amounts of differences in the dough. So it looks just more like it's gonna be very soft and melty rather than that buttery shatteriness of a French croissant. Well, let's try it. And I'm right and I appreciate it. So yeah, if you've had an, a Costco croissant before with that buttery, soft flakiness, and then you add on almost a shortbread cookie, that's what this is. It's really fun, actually. It's not what I expected, of course. I was expecting a melon pond, which is more of a fluffy dough, like a brioche. It, it's delightful. I feel like this needs jam, though. Like, butter and jam would make it just epic. As it is, I could take it a little dry and eat the whole thing. We'll eat some of it. Try this guy, see how we go. Try a bit more though first. Mm. That contrast and textures with the butteriness and the crispness. Ooh, it's fun. I do that strawberry. Yeah, the strawberry was a good call. At least for this set, it's a lot of buttery notes, 
that are kind of overwhelming as they go on the palette like the accumulation of butter is a bit much airplane noise time for the airplanes it's gonna be so loud so this guy is the cream cheese brioche i do like the sheer amount of sugar crystals on here so you're getting a lot of nice crunchy bits from the sugar oh dear so this is more the texture i was expecting for melon pond you have this enriched dough and it's got a nice little bit of fluff and some give and then little dollops of cream cheese okay let's give it a shot It's a little dry, not gonna lie. Brioche can be a little dry, so that's not too surprising, but I'm gonna try it with the cream cheese. The cream cheese here is really neutral, more so than I got from the cheese tart guy, and it's very lightly sweet. This whole thing is very just dough and cream cheese and then the sugar shine just surprising especially for anything coming out of china or hong kong i just expect chinese and japanese desserts to be less sweet so to see this much sugar is really unexpected i wonder if they designed this one for the u.s or not i, I have no idea take a break get some more of this guy You know what? Let, let's finish the cheese tart. Cause I feel like I'm gonna probably fill up about now, to be honest. Like, I'm. I like this guy here, the melon pond riff off. <laughs> riff off. The melon pond riff. It's really fun and light, but I want more with it. And the sponge is really dry. The brioche is kind of dry and this guy is too sweet for me to eat and this is my favorite so I just want to eat two of them and call it a day. Actually, let me know in the comments if it's okay if I just don't eat things I don't like. I'll probably use smaller portions then as opposed to doing a first impressions tasting like this guy. I just don't want to be clickbaity on their hand. I don't want to eat food I don't like and I don't want to make you guys think I'm going to eat everything on the plate when I would prefer to just not feel ill especially since they've shown that a lot of people have health issues from mukbang and as someone with chronic health everything nah. i want to be careful and i'm doing this with permission and the patience of my doctors so it's nice to figure out a balance that works for me and works for you for now though i'm eating the cheese tart It always amazes me that cheese tarts like this haven't taken off in the States. I mean, they're handheld, they're cute, you can do a lot with them. Yet you don't see them everywhere. I mean, look at this. It's just such a nice little handheld bite-sized bite. Maybe it's because the States have been so into health food, but I mean, this isn't very big, so you can get a lot of value out of it for your dessert. And I'm being so descriptive today. <laughs> so this is surprising to me how thick the crust is for this one because that makes it harder to chew. There's whole things about how much stuff you want on each layer of a dessert. And because this one is particularly dense, it's more like a cookie, it's going to be harder to get that first bite. But the edges are incredibly thin, which means this will be easier to tear apart. Hmm. It's just 
just nice to sit here on an afternoon and eat a cheese tart. And it's been kind of blustery all day. It's like this in a mug of hot tea sounds awesome right now. Actually, I'd love to hear from you. Do you have a favorite like afternoon cold day thing besides tea? I mean, tea and coffee, that's definitely in the start, but do you prefer cookies? Do you prefer cake? Do you prefer something healthy? Love to hear about it. my stomach and for not getting yelled at at my next doctor's appointment because I bet one of them will watch these one day. I'm gonna call it here with the mukbang. Again, this guy, the deluxe strawberry, very sweet. I think that's for someone who loves a strawberry jam flavor and probably is simply younger because the palette is more for like a child's palette. Not a bad way, just is. The brioche is very dry in a way that I'd rather drink with tea and since I don't have tea, gonna skip on it. The melon pon laminated dough guy here. It's actually fun but just way too filling for me right now and I want to not die. Cheese tarts. Lovely as always. Would buy a dozen. And the sponge cake just super dry. Which again that might be a case of this bakery. This is the brand new 85 degrees C in downtown Seattle and they're allowed to have growing pains. They're only a few weeks old. And I bet if I went in a few weeks, they'd have slightly different flavors. It's just I wanted to ring in the new year. And talking the state of Seattle desserts with these guys seemed like a good start. I will probably talk more about Seattle desserts next mukbang because I have more ideas. This is just what I felt like talking about today. So I hope you have a lovely time at today's tiny table mukbang. And I will catch you tomorrow.